intentional, man. It wasn't intentional. All right, so let's get back into this thing, man. So what I want y'all to understand, man, is that you need your own alpha masculine space. Why is that? Because as a man, when you go out here and deal with the world, you come back home, you need a peaceful space. You need a space where you can rest. You need a space where you can rejuvenate. You need a space where you can rebuild your alpha energy. And many times men don't have that space. They're going home to an environment where they got to go home and be even more alpha than you have to be out in the world. Man, you don't have an un unlimited, endless supply of energy and strength. You got to rest. Just like you can't go 25 days in a row without sleep. Eventually, you got to rest everything. Your mind, your body, your spirit. Eventually, you got to rest everything. And when you get to that point, you need to be able to go home to a quiet space where people aren't relying on you to dive into your most alpha energy. You need to be able to rest. It's almost like taking it off like a suit. You need to be able to come home and take it off and, and, and hang it up and spread it down and, and let it rest and rejuvenate before you put it back on in the morning. That's really how it goes. Put it in mind of your very best outfit and you got to wear it every day. What are you going to do? You're going to come home. You're going to wash it. You're going to dry. You're going to press it. You're going to hang it. Because you need to be able to jump right back into it as soon as you open your eyes. But that's the first thing. Now, that's, that should be enough. I should be able to just end the show just with that. That should be enough. We shouldn't need anything else. If we know that it's going to hamper our ability to and sometimes totally eliminate your ability to rejuvenate and replenish your alpha energy, that should be enough. Most of us should be able to just say, okay, well, I'm good. That's, that's all I need, doc. That's it. But let's keep going. What happens when you meet a woman? It's an exciting time. You're a, new woman. You're a new man to her. She's a new woman to you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all haven't done anything. So anything possible for a couple to do, y'all haven't done it yet. The excitement of anticipating time together is what relationships are built on. So when you at your crib, she at her crib, you living your life, she living her life, and y'all can only see each other on the weekends, man, that's an amazing time because you still have your life but you have kind of like a mini vacay from the grind of your life on the weekend. Sometimes you at her crib, sometimes she at your crib. And don't let her live a state or two away where y'all got to fly back and forth. Hey, man, listen, that is the most exciting time of two people meeting. That is, listen, the, it's the foundation. So how can you destroy the foundation? Cohabitation destroys the foundation of a relationship. The foundation of a relationship is the excitement of anticipating time together. And once you cohabitate, it's eliminated. It's eliminated. And in some instances, it turns into not ever wanting to, not ever having the anticipation of, of, of spending time together. When you got to wake up with somebody and you lay down with somebody and you eat with somebody and you cook with somebody and you, you bathe with somebody and you travel with somebody, you do, hey man, it gets to the point where all the novelty of that person and all the novelty of you and their life is gone. So after a while, the excitement of being intimate, you're just like, man, I see her every day. Like, man, don't nobody want to be intimate with the same woman they see every day. Women don't get that. And my, eventually my wood is not going to want you. That's just the way it is. Eventually my, my wood is only going to want you when it's, it's going some time is going to have to pass. And the thing is, if you're, if you're with me every day, the time is not going to pass. So part of the reason things go haywire after marriage is because even the two people cohabitate after marriage, that like there's a there's a finality to legal marriage. Saying I do, and that man saying, by the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you, man, there's a finality to that. And it's almost like it signifies the end of a relationship. That's why in olden days, people got married immediately. They didn't do all this dating and being together for 10 years. Man, when you're together for 10 years, any major move is the end of the relationship. Two people who get married after 10 years, they just ended a 10-year relationship to start a new relationship, man. That's the reality of it. You just ended a 10-year relationship to start a new one with the same person. And it makes no sense. So to even be in that scenario, it means that you're not, you're not understanding the reality of human interaction. And here's another thing. For men especially, the libido building act of, of, of sleeping alone is lost. Man, there is something amazingly peaceful about sleeping alone. Now, you don't have to sleep alone every night because y'all going to have y'all time together, but there is something amazingly peaceful about sleeping alone that you simply can't get with somebody in the bed with you, man. I don't care who y'all. As a man, you can. 
You know, a woman may be able to get that, but a man can't. You can't, you can't get it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you live in the gutter and you meet a woman and she live in the burbs and a bad crib, yeah, you might get a better night of sleep. But I'm talking about, we ain't talking about that. Here's the thing. Here's two guys we're not talking about. We're not talking about a guy who's struggling in life and hadn't been able and hadn't figured out how to make that of himself. And we're also not talking about a man who's living with a woman. Like if you had the point in life where you got to move in with a woman, none of this stuff applies to you. You ain't got no power. Like you're doing what you got to do in order to make a better life for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I'll tell you what else. When you don't sleep alone, sometimes somebody touching you in bed, it gets old. It'd be like, man, especially if you're used to sleeping alone. Used to sleeping alone, man, sometimes you just want to be in the bed by yourself. That's why people be buying these huge beds. If you notice, sometimes people get older and just, they get two separate beds. You know what I'm saying? They'll be in the same room, but in two separate beds. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not natural. It's not a natural act to sleep in the bed with the same person every night. It is not natural. It's absolute, It's one of the most unnatural aspects of a relationship. Sleeping in the bed with the same person every night, Man, even if y'all live in the same house, man, sleeping in the same bed is trash. Like, I do not want to sleep in the same bed with nobody every night. You know what I'm saying? Even cats in prison get their own bunk. You know what I'm saying? So the whole point of sleeping with someone is just unnatural. And men, we, we suppress that and act like we don't recognize it until it just get to the point where we just can't take it no more. And that's, that's one of the things that'll drive a man out to just say, man, hey, man, I got to give me another woman, man. Because you just, you, you're overwhelmed by the presence of this woman. Like, no man wants feminine energy around him every day, all day like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, your woman probably go to work, but that's, that's a small part of the day. She at work, she takes you on lunch. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you go have lunch with her. Sometimes she shoot home for lunch. Then another thing that happens is you kind of lose control of the frequency of intimacy. Now, you don't lose full control but you lose some of the tools that help you control it easily. You can still control it, but you lose some of the tools. Like not cohabitating is one of the major tools that I use or you can use or anyone can use when it comes to controlling the frequency of intimacy because you can always be busy if you're at your own crib. If somebody's living with you, they know you ain't busy. You understand? And you take on the responsibility you take on the responsibility. Like there's a oneness to this cohabitation thing. You take on the sole responsibility of being the pleasure giver for someone or the, I'll say the, the sexual energy partner. We'll just put it like that. You take on the responsibility of being the one that they rely on for their intimate needs. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I don't want to be relied on for nobody's intimate needs. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to do it unless I want to do it. So it ain't going to be no time where the woman want to do it and I don't want to do it and I'm just going to do it anyway. That ain't going to never happen. It ain't going to never happen because I'm never going to take it as my responsibility to please her. And women want that. In a cohabitation situation, a woman believes that it's your job to please. Now, she may not believe it's her job to please you, but she's going to believe it's your job to please her. And even if you don't do it, you still got a situation that could turn into, just turn into some negative energy, man. And I, I, for me, I just ain't with it. It just don't make sense. I'll tell you another thing, man. I will say this. Yes, sleeping with that soft, that soft leg, sleeping with that pretty young thing, man. Sleep, sleep with that, sleeping with that young tender man, sleeping with that, that, that middle-aged woman or whoever you got. And, and she's doing everything in her power, man, to make sure she presents herself in the most feminine manner, man. That's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. But it's only wonderful because you look forward to it. You always look forward to it as kind of like a vacation treat. So when you at the crib grinding all week long, man, when you get a chance to go to her crib or she come to your crib, man, either way it go, you know she's going to be at her very best. And so you get excited about that because it's an amazing time. Both of y'all have had time to desire one another and y'all don't y'all ain't mixed up in each other's lives. And I think that's one of the main problems that you dudes don't understand, man. When you cohabitate with a woman, man, you become mixed up in her life. Whatever going on in her life, some of these things you ain't even know about cohabitation, you're going to know about everything. You become mixed up in the problem she having with her family. You got to sit. Sometimes you might hear on the phone arguing with a family member. You might realize that, man, her and her dad don't get along like she told me they did. They be arguing all the time. You don't never know what you're going to, what you're going to have to deal with until cohabitation comes because if you're not around somebody 24 hours a day, you just will never know what happens. And once you cohabitate, man, you start to realize, man, that, man, 
man, this more than I. This, I bit off more than I can chew, man. This ain't for me. I don't want to do this. This ain't my thing right here. And it, it kills your libido. Like, see, for a man to have a to have a strong libido, he has to be at a certain state of peace of mind. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to have a naturally strong libido. Now, you can have a strong libido if you if you can't get laid. Yeah, you, your libido probably will be through the roof. But I'm talking about under normal circumstances, a man needs peace. A man needs to feel comfortable and confident in the life he's built for himself. And a man also needs to know that he's in control of the dynamic when it comes to his peace of mind and how it was approached or how it's encroached by someone else. You know what I'm saying? And or even infringed. You just have to understand that these things are necessary and you lose so many of those things in marriage cohabitation. You know what I'm saying? You lose an awful lot in marriage cohabitation. Famo, salute, Chris. What up? Rhythm of water. I see y'all in here, man. MPI, what up? JT Corn Ring. Appreciate the two bomb. Keep creating awesome content. Salute to you, man. Appreciate it. And so these are just some of the things, man, that, that we have to realize. You know, we, we go into these situations, and a lot of times we just succumb to the pressure of doing the thing. A lot of times before men cohabitate or before men le get legally married, man, in their mind, man, they be like, man, I don't want to do this, man. And this ain't this ain't worth it, man. I don't want to do this, man. This sucks, man. Like, this ain't going to work, man. This ain't going to work. I ain't lying, man. And we just do it anyway. B, what up? King Abraham, what up, man? J. Lee, what up? Now, another thing I say is this. There are many forms of non-intimate cuddling. And there are some services now where women offer cuddling services. To women, to men, they offer services where when you want to cuddle, somebody will just come cuddle with you. Like sometimes they group cuddle. I'm talking about literally, all they do is cuddle. They just hug up and cuddle. They might Netflix and chill, or they may all just cuddle up together. Just cuddling. And I'm going to tell you what the issue with that is. When you are involved in all those forms of non-intimate cuddling, it separates the act of cuddling from being a precursor or an after effect of sex. See, for me, if I'm cuddling with a chick, man, it's cause, man, like, like we've been, we've been hanging all day, man, and we both incredibly aroused. And so we can't keep our hands off each other, but it's still early in the day. And we just trying to, you know, we, we, we trying to make it a, a great night. We haven't, we haven't had our dinner yet. We haven't had whatever, whatever we, if we're going to drink, we never had what we're going to drink. We have, we haven't any of that. Like there's a buildup to later on. And so we just, you know, you might see, we might see some public displays of affection. You might see all kinds of things. But when you're in a marriage or a relationship, cohabitation relationship, you end up cuddling all the time. And so that connection, that physical connection, it takes away some of the steam of intimacy because that is cuddling is a part of intimacy. It is a part of sexual in, engagement between an adult man and woman. That's what it's a part of. No man should be doing that. If he not being intimate with the woman, like you got dudes around here, man, I, I call them, man, you know, women make, they make booty calls, they make foodie calls and they make cuddle calls. There's dudes out here, man, that ain't nothing but cuddlers. Them boys are all day cuddlers. I call them. I'm telling you, man, I call them, I, I call them, uh, they're, they're, they're cuddle bubbies. You know what I'm saying? The cuddle bears, man. That's all they are, man. They're like a human teddy bear. All they get to do is cuddle. They don't get no food. They don't get no loving. They just get to cuddle. And so I'm telling you, if you go into this type of situation, you got to limit the non-intimate contact. Non-intimate physical contact is still physical contact. And you as a man can only handle so much feminine content from the same woman, but so much physical content from the same woman. I'm telling y'all what I know, man. After a certain amount of physical content, man, you don't want to be physical. You don't want to be physical with that woman in no kind of way. And so that's one of the main things I think men and men overlook. Those non-intimate forms of cuddling where you may do it three days out of a week. That's three days out of a week where you done been up there cuddling. And another thing it does, it turns the woman off too. It lowers her libido as well because she can get more out of that. You know what I'm saying? She can get more out of that. And man, there may be some, some you know, all type of, things that lead almost up to intimacy, but it won't. And then you get to the point where you're starting to not have, not be intimate with a woman as much as you want to. And so here's the thing about the male human body. Here's what happens. I'm telling you this. That's why guys who can't, 
who can't get women. A lot of time, it's psychological. It's not a physical thing that they're going through. It's psychological. Physically, at some point, as you start to feel less desired, then you're going to desire that person who's less desired, who, who desires you less. That's how we function as men. Women don't function like that. The less you desire her, the more she desires you. But we don't function like that as men unless we're functioning in our feminine energy. And that's a totally different story. But I'll say this to you as well. When you see her on the weekends, she's always perfect. Hair is always perfect. Skin is always glowing. Always wearing something. It may not be new, but it's something you haven't seen, so it's new to you. See what I'm saying? It's new to you. So let's say she got 30 lingerie sets and you only seeing her on weekends. You only, you only seeing four lingerie sets a month. It's going to take seven months and, and, and two more weeks for you to see all of her lingerie sets. You know what I'm saying? So you, can, you, you only get to see her at her best. Cohabitation changes that. You get to see her in ways, man, that you will never forget. Imagine going from seeing a woman with her hair done all the time to seeing that woman with her hair all over her head. Imagine the effect that's going to have on you. Because as men, we're creatures of sight, man. When we see it, we, we can't forget it. You know what I'm saying? We can't convince ourselves that we didn't see what we saw. When we see it, we're scarred by it, man. And so you see her, man, and I'm talking about, and I'm talking about all over here, man. I'm talking about all over here, man, looking throw it away. You know what I'm saying? Every time you see her, she got on some sex, wearing some sex for you, man. And then, and, and, you know, she, she, she looking good, man. And then, man, you cohabitate with her. You ain't even realize she had these bunnets. You ain't realize she had these sweatpants with the hole in it. You ain't realize she had that T-shirt with the hole and the grease stain on it. And the fact that she wears it. Because, like Sai just said, she gets comfortable. And you, you're, you're not the man that she's trying to impress anymore. You're the man that she has already. Here, here's the thin line, man. There's a thin line between being the man that a woman wants to impress and being the man that she feels like she has already impressed. Here's the thing about being the man that she feels like she has already impressed. Her effort and energy to impress you are almost eliminated. Because she, once you let her know that you're impressed with her enough to just accept her for where she is and she ain't got to do nothing else, that's the point where she stops trying. Not because she, you, you told her to stop trying. You made her feel like it was okay for her to stop trying, that she didn't have to impress you anymore. That's on you. But once you do it, it's over. You can't turn it back on. Once you turn that off, you can't turn it back on. That's why you are at the home and your woman be looking any kind of way. Then she look her very best when she go out in public. You know why? Because those guys out in public, that give her a compliment. It means something to her. Your compliments don't mean anything no more. Why? Because you didn't nip it in the bud the first time you saw it and you couldn't because you cohabitated with her before you got a chance to see how she really is. And I'm telling you, all women are like that. Once they get comfortable with you in a cohabitation situation, they stop trying. Why? Because they can't, you can't defeat that. You can't go from being ready to see a man on weekends to being ready every day, 24-7. And that's what you got to understand as a man. Man, you, you can't even expect a woman to be the same 24-7, seven days a week, like she is just on weekends. And almost everybody get dimed up on the weekends, even whether you're going out or not. Many people look their best on the weekend so they can go out to a party, go out to a club, or go out to an event, or travel somewhere. People, all people in America are used to looking their best on the weekends. I mean, looking a different best on the weekends. You know, you look good at your job, but you look a different best on your weekend. And a woman is used to that. It's just par for the course. Even in high school, even in college, everybody got ready to go out on the weekends. But you expecting that woman to look her very best for you every day? Man, that's just unrealistic, dog. Unless you're going to pay the cost to be the boss and she ain't got nothing to do but look good for you. Now, if you're going to do that, that's different. That's different. If you're going to let her just be at home and all she got to do is be, is be housewife, be Susie homemaker, 
and just look good for you every day. Okay, she don't have no excuse. But many men ain't in that situation, and many men don't want to be in that situation. You know what I'm saying? And so under normal circumstances, she going out to get her money too. Couple super chats right here, man. Salute, Sai Mugger. What's good, bro? Salute to you. Appreciate the dub. Cohabitation can make a situation stagnant, especially if you all hardly get time away from each other. Then she might get too comfortable and come to bed in any old kind of way because she used to you being there. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Same thing I just talked about. Exactly. Salute to you, man. Y'all go subscribe to the brother's side, man. MPI, appreciate the five bones. MPI say a chick I used to see in Phoenix City, Alabama, always had on her favorite wig, had my towel and bath cloud laid out on her bed, and you know the rest. Yep. That, but that's how it is, man, when they know you're coming through. When a woman values your presence, you now a woman can still value your presence in cohabitation, but it's just tougher to do without enhancing her life in a financial way. I'm just keeping it a buck with y'all. Colin, what's good, bro? Appreciate the five bomb. Me and my girl lived together until about a month ago. We decided to live separately to see how it went. Every single point BOA says the truth. Salute, man. Salute. You made a strong move right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. That whole cohabitation thing, man, I'm going to be honest with you. It's too much for me. You know what I'm saying? It's too much for me. You know, I, there, there are too many, there are too many things, there are too many contributing factors to it not being conducive to peace of mind, man. You know what I'm saying? Another thing is this, man. When you realize that she's always at her best when dating or any time prior to cohabitation, you know you're always at your best as well. You already know you're not finna go to the woman how need no haircut. You already know you ain't. You know you're gonna be fresh and clean. You know what I'm saying? You already know you ain't finna go to the woman's house. This is the sign you know when you get comfortable, where you leave from somewhere and go straight to her house and just shower at her house. Man, I don't, don't ever do that. Don't ever leave from playing ball and go to a woman's house and shower at her house. Just be late getting there. Don't ever do, or be on time. Leave playing ball on time to get with y'all, get to y'all reservation or whatever y'all gonna do. Never do that. The worst thing you can do is let a woman see you at your worst. You never let a woman see you at your worst. Cohabitation will, will definitely. Got a train coming by, man. I don't know if y'all can hear, but I can, man. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can hear right. I'm gonna see if I can hear right. So, uh, just a little bit, just a little bit. It ain't too bad. I can hear it though. I probably could change the noise gate and block that out, but. So anyway, I say this to y'all, man. When you understand that, you got to know that it's the same thing with you and her. This ain't just about the woman. This is about you too. Man, I'm not finna show up in no woman's house, man. I done left basketball. I done left the gym, man. When I show, every time she see me, man, I'm going to be dope. You know what I'm saying? Every time she see me, I'm going to be dope. She ain't going to never, she ain't going to know what I look like not dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be on point every time. Why? I mean, because that's a part of the allure. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's a part of the allure. I'm going to be on point every time. Am I saying I'm going to dress up and put on my jewelry and do all that? No. I'm saying I'm going to be on point every time. You know what I'm saying? The only thing she's going to be to say, if somebody say, uh, blah, 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 she's going to, man, he, he, he always on point. You know what I'm saying? Always smelling good, always looking good, always feeling good. But these are the type of things that you have to know as a man. So you know if you do these things, it's the same thing for her. You ain't never had a woman tell you, man, that, you know, like she, she wanted to, um, you know, she was trying to, for whatever reason, y'all were trying to spend some time together, whatever, man, and her stylist had to cancel her appointment, and she was like, she begged, begged to wait till next week. You know what I'm saying? Because there was no way. To, but now, if you had told her to come on, she would have came. But she begged to wait till next week because she couldn't get her hair done. Now, you, a beta male sale manager, and say, well, no, I want to see you this week. I want to see you this week. How come you ain't show up? This boy showed up this week. I want to see you. Every time we're supposed to meet together, yeah, you don't never show up. Every time. I'm tired of this now. I'm tired of every time we're supposed to show up. Sick of it. Sick of it now. Every time we're supposed to show up, you don't never show up. Then you gonna turn around and act like it's my fault. Let me tell you like this. It ain't my fault. It's BOA's fault. 
He's always talking all this apple talk, and I can't do nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? He always telling me, do this, do that. But I ain't you, B.O.A. I can't do that stuff. I ain't you, and I ain't gonna listen to you no more. That's true. Now, when you think about these things, you have to keep in mind that reality is reality and you can't defeat reality. Reality can't be defeated. So you got to keep in mind that these things count for you and the woman. We both have to deal with this. Another thing is this. All it takes is one soiled feminine sanitary napkin to make you realize the error of your ways. All it takes is one sawed feminine sanitary napkin during that time of the month to make you realize the error of your ways. That's it. Nothing else. That's all it takes. You see that one time and you realize that cohabitation does not rule the nation. And these are some of the things that you're going to have to see. Like, I don't want to go into the bathroom and see long female hair in my shower. Like, I don't like those types of things. I don't want to see that. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to put uh, uh, anything in my bathroom trash can and look in there and there's a feminine sanitary napkin in there. And technically speaking, the Most High has already told us that the woman's supposed to be separated when she's on her cycle. She's supposed to be separated from you. She's supposed to be put apart. Now, how you going to put her apart and you live with her? How you going to put her apart and she lives with you? See what I'm saying? If you just follow the word of the Most High, a lot of these things, you, you'll understand why you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? You'll understand 100 why you can't do it. But you still do it anyway. Why? Because that's what the woman wants. You know what I'm saying? Ima imagine this. I want y'all to put a one in the chat and keep it a buck, homies. Keep it a buck. You know, we keep it a buck over here in the atmosphere. We deal with the truths of life. Put a one in the chat. If you have ever been around a woman and she was on her cycle and you were sitting there cuddling with her, and Netflix and chilling with her and had her laying all up under you. You probably sitting there rubbing on her belly too. But be honest though, brothers. We ain't in here to tell you down. We're going to be honest. We're going to let ourselves know that we have been doing this the wrong way and we have the right to do it the right way. Put a one in the chat, man, if you ever done that. Ever had a woman around you, man, who it was a time of the month, man, and you just, you just let her laying all up with you, man. Uh, you, you know, you, you cuddling with her, man. You making her feel better, man. You holding a heat pad on her stomach, man. You walk around holding hands with her at the park, man. You like, you're doing all type of thing, man. You laying in bed all cuddled up, man, and, and spooning and all that, man. And you got to ask yourself, why would you do such a thing? Why would you do such a thing? That is an absolute time of a woman's life, man, where she should be put away from you. She is not clean at that particular time. Anything she touch, anything she sit on, shall be unclean. Anything she lays on shall be unclean. That ain't what I said. It's what the most I said. So when you think about these things, man, you some things you can't even avoid if you cohabitate. You can't. And let me tell y'all something. Now this going this gonna be some serious right here. Your flirting capacity. It's greatly minimized when you cohabitate. You can't really flirt like you want to flirt because the end result complications have arise, have arisen. So you have end result complications. Let's say you flirt with a woman and the woman is really feeling you. Guess what? You live at home with your old lady. So your potential for flirting is gone. On. And here's the thing, man. You got to understand that when it's that time on the month for one man, you need to stay far away from her. You know what I'm saying? Nothing she has is nothing she has is clean at that point. So you got to just wrap your mind around the concept that I see Sai say he got some dome with it, man. That was some dirty dome, Sai. See, the reality of the scenario is when you realize what you're giving up, then you have to ask yourself if it's what I'm getting. Some of y'all ain't getting nothing when y'all cohabitate with a woman. But is what I'm getting worth what I'm giving up? You know what I'm saying? Is what I'm giving worth what I'm giving up? 
That's what I want to know. I, I don't want to know nothing else. I just want to know if what I'm giving is worth what I'm giving up. Am I getting fair recompense for the things that I'm sacrificing? I'm sacrificing my freedom. I'm sacrificing my peace of mind. I'm sacrificing the, the right to have whoever visit me that I want to have visit me. I'm sacrificing all of that. And nine times out of 10, you ain't even getting no shut up and it's an obedience. You ain't even getting no shut up and it's an obedience out of it. So help me understand how you feel like you're, you're gaining something when you're losing so much. I think the problem is, is that we've been taught that that's the end result of a successful man's life. If you're successful, here's what you do. You go and you be with a woman and y'all just live together and y'all y'all do, hey man, listen, if that's what you want to do, do it. But do it for the right reasons. Do it because you're at that point in life where all that other stuff don't matter anymore. You know what I'm saying? If you get to that point, eventually, I, some men just get to that point in life, man, where they've aged out of all of that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? They've got bored with it. And they don't mind just having that one woman or they meet that woman who enhances their life so much. And I'm talking about not just enhance, I'm talking about enhance your life so much that all you can do is keep her in your life. But even that, cohabitation is not the way to go. Let that woman have her own crib. You have your own crib. Don't give up the freedom of having your own spot, man. At no point. Cohabitation ruins intimate relations. I'm trying to tell you. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You can have a wonderful relationship with a woman but not, by, not have, by not moving in with her or letting her move in with you or moving in together by not cohabitating. Let's put it like that. You can have a wonderful relationship with a woman by not cohabitating. Cohabitation turns into a 50-50 relationship. It wasn't meant to happen. It wasn't meant to happen. It just wasn't, man. Gone are the days where that is the most beneficial type of relationship to have. That cohabitation relationship is not the most beneficial type of relationship to have, man. It's just not that anymore. I mean, it, it was at one time, I imagine, but now it's just not that. And we have to accept that. You know what I'm saying? As men, we have to accept that. Got a couple super chats up here, man. Let's knock them on out right quick. Frank H., appreciate the dime. Dr. B.O.A., you spin flame like a dragon with today's topic. I'll never live with a woman ever again. Hey, man, you and me both, man. That, it just ain't the way to go, man. It just ain't. You, you just got to deal with too many things, man. You got to deal. And it's not, it, it's not, I mean, women aren't bad in those situations. Now, hopefully you ain't in a situation like that with a woman that's just bad. But there are just certain things that come with femininity that you don't want to have to deal with every day. You don't want to have to deal with that every day. Strength Gang, appreciate the dime. What up, Dr. B.O.A.? Appreciate the content. Salute. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you being in the joint. African Cartel, salute. Appreciate the five bones. Real grown man. Talk right here. Salute, bro. Salute. Bill Elmore, what's good, bro? Salute. Appreciate the five bones. Men giving up freedom, trying to keep an eye on a woman. That's that's And that's one of the main things, man. One of the main things is what you got to understand is that the same way you're going to get bored in a relationship, the woman going to get bored too. But here's the thing about her boredom. She has more to gain because when you cohabitate with a woman, you take on the responsibility of providing and protecting. You take on that responsibility. You understand? And so what she gets is to absolve herself from being responsible for herself. She don't have to be responsible for her provision and protection anymore. What are you getting? The same intimacy that you were already getting minus the dedication to pleasing you, minus the dedication to looking good for you, minus the dedication to earning your time, minus the effort and energy that it won't put forth to make you believe that she's the one for you. You lose all of that, and all you get is the same old intimacy you've been getting. Man, want my whole life changed, man. And I think many men don't understand this, and because men don't understand it, then women don't hear it either. Men don't tell women this because men don't understand this. The bottom line is the cohabitation is not the most amazing thing for a man. It never has been. It never will be. It's not something that we look forward to and say, oh, man, my life is going to be so great. See, what you got to understand is this. When you cohabitate, the appreciation for the small things and ultimately the person offering those things 
it just naturally wanes. It becomes a part of the norm. So let's say you only seeing a woman on weekends and a woman only cooking for you on Sunday. Let's say y'all see each other on weekend. <clears throat> Let me get a swig of water. Y'all only see each other on weekend. On Friday, y'all kick it. Y'all been missing each other all week, so y'all just meet up somewhere on Friday. Y'all go out, man. Y'all eat. Y'all y'all may go do a little dancing. Y'all do whatever y'all gonna do, man. Y'all may go catch a y'all may go catch a, a a movie or whatever, man. Saturday, whatever y'all doing, y'all may just be chilling, or y'all might go do some shopping, or y'all might just be chilling. Y'all might be on the Sabbath day, which you should be doing. Y'all might be on the Sabbath day, just chilling, man. Sunday, she cooks for you. So. Even though all through the week you cook for yourself, Sunday she cooks in a way that you don't normally cook for yourself. She takes time and spends hours in the kitchen preparing whatever you want. And sometimes preparing new things for you, new cultural dishes that you've never tried in your life, which I'm telling you, that, that's for me. I mean, hey, man, a woman who does that, man, Sharon's a soft spot in my heart, to be honest with you, man. She can give me some different cuisines some di from a different culture. But when you think about that, that's something you get. Yeah, all through the week we cook for ourselves. But when last time you sat in the house cook Sunday dinner for yourself? You know what I'm saying? I ain't. I don't do it. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is you even lose that. You know what I'm saying? You lose the effort that comes with that. And so you lose the appreciation that comes with it. You lose the appreciation that comes with it. And when the appreciation is gone for something, there's only a few things that can happen within the course of a relationship that you truly appreciate. And cohabitation ruins those things. You know what I'm saying? Cohabitation ruins those things. Like, I don't want to live with somebody every day and then take a vacation and then take a vacation with that same person. I don't want to do that. Just think about the logic of it. Everything is messed up from cohabitation because I don't want to do nothing else with you if we cohabitate. I don't want to do nothing else with you. When I, when I leave home, if we live together, when I leave home, I'm trying to get away from you, not go do something else with you. And many men out here, the majority of men out here in these cohabitation situations feel the same way, think the same way. They're not going to say it. Why? Because that might get you in some trouble. It's going to be some trouble, trouble. That might get you in trouble, man. But that's how men really feel. You get in a situation, man, you got to compromise all types of things. Think about this. Any man who's been in a relationship, let's keep it a buck. Put a one in the chat. And keep it a buck, man. If you got in a relationship and had the exact same freedom to move around that you always had. Now, I'm not saying the woman can force you to do nothing, but how many times did you compromise that freedom just because that's what you're quote unquote supposed to do in the parameter within the parameters of a relationship? How many times have you compromised everything because that's what you're supposed to do? You're just supposed to do that in a relationship. You're in a relationship. You got to come home at a decent time. You're in a relationship. You can't be going. Hey, some of y'all can't even hang out with your single partners no more. I can't hang out. You can't hang out with your single partners. You're not supposed to hang out with them. You're in a relationship. They're single. Can't hang out with the people you used to hang out with. Can't do the things you used to do. Can't go nowhere. Can't go hang out and stay as long as you want to. Got a curfew. You got to walk in the house and worry about somebody sitting up on the sofa telling me, where have you been? I have been looking all over for you, mister. Come on, man. I don't want that in my life, bro. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. That's a poor man's life. Where in order to have a better quality of life, you need the woman to contribute to your life. And in order for her to contribute to your life, she, I mean, she part boss. Anytime a woman is giving 50% contribution to your life, she 50% of the boss of the environment. You know what I'm saying? She 50% of the boss of the environment. We ain't talking about the game. We ain't talking about the life. We talking about it in the square world. In the square world, your woman getting up going to work every day. She ain't going out there getting to that paper like that. You, you ain't, she was already getting money when you met her. We ain't talking about that. So that's all I'm saying, man. You got to remember that these are some of the compromises and sacrifices that you got to make. You got to make it. And not, and, and not just you aren't the only one who are going to stop appreciating the small things. She's going to stop appreciating the small things as well. She's going to stop appreciating that. Think about it. You had a crib on the weekend, man. 
you leaving uh let's say you leaving monday morning early monday morning man you just you got to get back you you got to get back and get ready to do your thing you got to get back on the grind you're leaving early monday morning man why since you're going out anyway man you just pull the trash out to the curb man you know she get up she you know she she's still in the bed when you leave man she still got a little bit longer before she got to get up she get up man she going there man she's oh, she running behind she going there man to take trash out man trash already gone you know what she do she send you a thank you text because she appreciates you. She sends you a thank you text because she appreciates it. She doesn't appreciate it anymore when y'all cohabitate. You know why? Because it's not something you're doing out of kindness of your heart. It's your job. And it is your job at your house. But why let the woman come live in your house when you're doing simple things that she appreciates that make you an amazing man? You know what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. A woman had been in, the, nine times I tell you meet a woman, man, she'd been in a relationship with a beta male, some man, Johnny, man, who just didn't do things like that. He was just lazy. You know what I'm saying? He'll walk right out the door first thing in the morning, man, or she'll be at work, you know what I'm saying? Hadn't got home yet, or, and, and or however it goes, he'll be, he'll, he'll just walk straight out the door. Why ain't, why ain't pull the trash out? You, you just see it out there. You know what the trash day is. You live in the same, you live in the same, you know, general vicinity. And so you just pull it out. You may not do it every time, but when you do it, she knows she respects that you're doing something you don't have to do. And that's how you always maintain the position of power in a relationship. You hold on to as many things that you don't have to do because those are your tools and jewels. You know what I'm saying? Those, those are the tools that you use to make the woman be more enthused about, you know, sticking to your commandments and rules you know what i'm saying that's what you got to do you have to keep in mind that everything should be appreciated but it's harder to appreciate it after cohabitation it's just harder to appreciate it man so you gotta you got you gotta and another thing man a lot of times you go into a situation cohabitate with a woman who ain't grinding and that's one of their major problems you go into a situation and if that woman ain't getting no money if she ain't doing her thing she going to automatically become an expense for you. She becomes an expense and your everyday cost of living goes up. So you go from chilling, having a certain way, having your money budgeted out a certain way, cohabitation, bam, everything go through the roof. Everything goes through the roof. You understand? Because when you take on the responsibility of a woman coming into your life like that, then you're going to take on the brunt of the financial responsibility, man. That's just what you don't think you're going to do it, but as a man, you're just going to naturally do that. And so when you do that, you got to think about it. What if she's a woman who ain't making no money? She ain't making no money. Or she's making a little bit of money that they ain't going to help nothing. That's why I tell you, men, and this is one of the greatest things I could tell you, men. Never, ever deal with a woman who has nothing. Never deal with a woman who has nothing. And tomorrow I'll tell y'all five reasons why you should never deal with a woman who has nothing. Never do it. If she has nothing, don't deal with her. You can't do it. And, there, and, and these reasons are so simple, but men just skip over them. You just simply can't do it. And so I say this, man, let her keep her crib. You keep your crib. The relationship is still going to be great, still going to be phenomenal. And it's just going to be better for everybody, man. It's going to be better. In my esteemed opinion, it's going to be better. Now, are there exceptions to the rule? Yes, there are exceptions to the rule. There are some men who, who they, just, they just got the woman who fits into their life. You know what I'm saying? They got the woman who fits into their life. But that's just based on the characteristics that woman has. She just fits into their life. You know, because the bottom line is many times, You'll be in a situation with a woman man, who don't even like you like that. Many times cohabitation goes wrong because the woman don't really like you like that. And even if a woman don't like you, I mean, if she ain't got no other options, she can be aroused enough by the weekend to make you feel like she like you. Cohabitate with that woman and you get to realize she don't like you like that. You know what I'm saying? Because having you around all the time reminds her that she don't like you. And it reminds you that you don't like her, but what do you do? You start trying to win the woman over. You know, you start trying to win the woman over. Somebody said they can't hear me, man. Y'all put a one in the chat if y'all can't hear me, man. Y'all should be able to hear me. Everything should be good over here, man. And y'all put a one in the chat if y'all can't hear me, man.
Yeah, yeah, man. Bro, I'm gonna have to time you out, man. I'm gonna time you out for that, man. You interrupt the whole show, man. Tell my man, can't nobody hear you, man. I, I had to time you out, bro. That was crazy right there, man. Just messed up the whole flow, man. I forgot where I was at now, man. Because I got to take care of that if the sound went out. Can't keep talking. So, but anyway, man, let's go ahead, man. Let's go ahead. Now, here's another thing, man. And, and y'all got to y'all gotta agree with this. Y'all got to agree with this. Women talk too much. Even prior to cohabitation, women talk too much. You know what I'm saying? But afterwards, it's like she becomes a motor mouth. She becomes an absolute motor mouth after cohabitation. But it's not because she's talking more. It's not because she's talking more. It's because you're there to listen more. See, when you at home, at your crib, you don't know how often she be on the phone running her yap. You don't know that. You only talk to her when you talk to her. When you ain't talking to her, you don't know how much she be on the phone running her yap. And I promise you, you won't find out how much she running her yap until you cohabitate with her. And boy, you when you just hear her voice so much, man. She's all she's talking to her mama. She's talking to her sister. She's talking to her homegirl. She's talking to her brother. She's talking to the pastor. She's talking to the pastor wife. She's talking to her little nephew. She's talking to her little niece. Man, she's talking to the students at the school. She's talking to the professor, man, who she's talking to everybody all day, man. When she had the career, man, she just yapping. And I'm gonna be honest with you, boy. I ain't with that, man. I need some shut up in this. Now, in the rare occasion that the woman's voice is music to your ears, that's a possibility. That is a possibility. And the rare occasion that the woman's voice is music to your ears, hey, man, this don't apply to you. Don't apply to you at all. But for most of us, the woman's voice is not music to your ears. Unless it's the type of music you hate the most, playing really loud in your ears. But like I said, man, there are some exceptions to the rule. If you have that exception, fine. But most men who say they have that exception really don't have that exception. They're just making unfair compromises to themselves, man. So I got a couple more super chats here, man. K Pop, what's good, man? Appreciate the five bones video came at right time. Got a great woman. She engaged in my life, but something inside me saying, don't move out my place in with her. I will regret it. Whatever that is in your mind, bro, that's not something in your mind, bro. That's your, that ain't something inside of you. That's your first mind, man. That's your, I mean, that's your logic. You know what I'm saying? As a man, your logic speaks to you first. So we call it first mind, but it's your logical voice. Your logical voice is speaking to you first, man. I don't never not listen to my logical voice because if, if somebody say, well, what if you miss out? I ain't never missed out listening to my logical voice. I've never listened to my first mind and said, man, I should have waited and listened to see what my second mind was going to say. I ain't never had that happen in my life. If you have, put a one in the chat. If you've ever listened to your first mind and been led astray, Put a one in the chat. I'm talking about really listen to your first mind. I ain't talking about go back and bounce back and forth and you don't know you don't know what to do. I'm talking about when some when your first mind tell you, man, when, you, when that gut instinct, when when your logic tell you, hey, man, don't do that. And you listen to it. I mean, time you got led astray. I never have. Supreme C, appreciate the dub. You spitting fire, bro. How do I come a member on YouTube? I'm on Patreon. Uh, go to the main channel page, man. And uh, I think D Fleming might put the link in there already for you. Playing pretty good on uh on, on on putting the links in there, but go to the main channel page, man, and uh next to subscribe you'll see join, and you just go ahead and hit that join button, man, and go ahead and, and come on back up in the joint. Moga Naj, what's good, bro? What's good, man? Appreciate you being in the joint. Salute, bro. Salute to you, man. Appreciate the dub. Hey, man, y'all go subscribe to that brother channel, man. Follow him on IG too, man. You know what I'm saying? That's good dude right there, man. You know he he. Straight, straight up plant based man. That's a good dude right there, man. Y'all go ahead and follow. Salute to you, man. Appreciate you being in the joint. Now, I will say this at the same time, man. I will say this. If you got a woman and you just love having her around, because this is a possibility. Like, I know men like this. I do know some men who just have that woman, but the majority of us don't. The overwhelming majority of us don't. But if you just have that woman, then don't let me talk you out of being with that woman. If you don't, if these things don't apply to you, if she, if you, if she talking to you, man, you love to hear her talking. It's just the most 
fun all the time and y'all been together five, 10 years and y'all still can't keep your hands off each other and all that. Hey, man, I'm not talking to you. Obviously, you're one of the, the few exceptions. But exceptions do not change the rule. And I'll tell you another thing, man. The reason why you, now I remember what I was saying. The reason why it seems like she becomes a motor mouth it's because you replace her previous communication outlets. You replace the friends she used to talk to. She don't talk to her as much no more. You ever met a woman who said, yeah, my friend, you know, whenever my friend got a man now, we don't talk as much. It's not because your friend don't want to talk to you. It's because your friend has a more convenient ear now. It takes less effort to just talk to somebody than it does to pick up the phone and dial your number. Pick up the phone and hit your name. It takes less effort. She can come right in the house and start talking. So it's not that she talks more. It's that you're just there to listen to everything. So you replace her homies. I mean, you replace her mama. You replace her, her, her daddy. You replace, you, you replace everybody, man. You replace her brother. You just become the ear that she spills in. And she feel like she going to hit you with double because you got two ears. And that's why it seems like she talks so much more during cohabitation. No, you're just there to listen so much more. And I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm, I don't want to replace nobody in a woman's life. I don't want to replace nobody. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. If you got friends, you go do that with them. What you were doing with your friend before? Okay, keep doing that with them. I don't want to do it. Because that's how I am with my life. You know what I'm saying? I do things that I like to do. A lot of them I do by myself. Other ones, man, I may do with my partners. Then some I may do with my sons, man. And if that's how I do it, that's what I'm going to do. It ain't going to never happen. You ain't going to never, baby, do those things with me. Why? Because I want you to do your life the same way. Hey, I like to do this. You want to go try this? Nope. I'm already culturally advanced enough. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't finna show me something that's just absolutely, you know, outside of this culture and introducing me to something different culturally, then I don't want to do that. I don't want whatever you already do in your life, man. Keep doing it. I ain't got time for that. I don't want to be your homeboy. I ain't trying to do that. So whatever, whatever. Whatever you were doing before, whoever you talked to before, yapping in their ear, man, don't, don't tell me what's going on at your job. I don't care. Whoever you were telling that before, go tell them. Don't tell me about no problem you're having with your mom. Whoever you tell them before, go tell them. Call your brother, tell him. Call your sister, tell them. Don't tell me about it because I don't care nothing about it. You know, I ain't got time, man, to be getting myself all tied up and involved in nobody extra stuff they got going on in their life, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's real. And let me tell you something about your flirting capacity and how it's greatly minimized. Flirting. When you're a single man, you flirt, it could turn into anything. You know what I'm saying? It can. You flirt with a woman, she like you, you like her, bam. Y'all meet up somewhere the same day, or y'all just, hey man, y'all sit down right there. Y'all both at the coffee shop, y'all sit down and have the coffee together. Y'all both at a restaurant, y'all sit down and eat together. Y'all do all of these things, man. But when you're in a cohabitation situation, you're still going to flirt. Everybody flirts. If you think your woman don't flirt, you're crazy. Everybody flirts. And it, it may not be no flirt that's intended to lead to anything, but it's going to be some flirting. But for us, it's complicated because what if that woman really likes you and she really feeling you? You ain't got no crib to take it to unless you're going to take it to the crib that you with your girl. You understand? You just can't even do it. So that's why I tell me, if you're going to be in a cohabitation situation, you just don't need to have no other women. And there is the caveat. The title of this, when you get married, your will start working if you don't have another woman. Why? Because what happens is you end up still trying to. Most times you're with a woman that you don't really want to be with. And so that leads to you desiring another woman or other women. The problem is if you're cohabitating with a woman, you cannot have other women. You cannot have other women. You cannot have other women if you're cohabitating with a woman. Why? Because you have given up the right to do that. You have compromised that. You have willingly said, I won't do that because cohabitation is commitment. And that's what a lot of guys don't understand. Cohabitation is commitment. That's a commitment move. And the reason why it always turns out so poorly is guys go into it and they still try to be a player while they're cohabitating. They still try to be a Mac while they're cohabitating. How are you going to be a Mac and cohabitating and your, and your woman live with you? You're going to be an unsuccessful Mac. Your quality going to go way down because if you got a high quality woman at home, another high quality woman ain't finna be the chick you just run around with while your high quality woman at home. Any other woman that's her quality or higher is not going to play that role. So you're going to be around here traipsing around with low quality women because 
a woman who has high quality and high value for herself. I'm talking about true high value, not her. You know, well, I, well I, 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 you should pay me money. Not that. I'm talking about true value for herself. That woman is going to want baby to come to your crib. And you know what? You're going to want her to baby to come to your crib. So the bottom line is, if you're not prepared to just be with that one woman, first you got to meet that one woman that you want to be with like that. And if those two things don't happen at the same time, you meet that woman you want to be with like that, and you're ready to just to just chill out, hey, man, don't do it. Don't do it. It's going to be bad for everybody. It's going to be bad for everybody. It's going to be terrible for everybody involved. It ain't going to work out for you. It ain't going to work out for the woman. It ain't going to work out for the other women you're dealing with. It ain't going to work out for nobody, man. Because here's the thing. Either you're going to deal with lower quality or you're going to lie to the same quality or higher. And that's they're going to blow up in your face. And then you're going to be around here looking like a beta male simp mangina. So I'm telling you, man, the stress of being in a cohabitation situation will kill your libido if you really don't want to be in that situation. I truly believe that 50 to 60% of men who are in cohabitation situations don't want to be in them. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. I truly believe that 50 to 60% of men who are in a cohabitation situation are in it because he gave them an opportunity to upgrade their life. And if you get that, you let that man hit the lottery, man, he'll be going on that woman tomorrow. I truly believe that. I believe the same thing with women, though. I believe that 50% of women in a cohabitation situation, if they, if you give them, if you give them the, let them hit the lottery tomorrow, man, 50% of them will be gone. You know what I'm saying? There's some others that'll stay around and spread the wealth, man, and let the man take over the wealth and do the things he need to do. And then there's some other who will stay around and say, now nah, I'm in control. I'm the boss now. I got the money. But 50% of them, man, they're going to they gonna bounce. They'll be gone tomorrow, man. It could be 80 flims. I'm, I'm being generous. You know what I'm saying? I'm being generous. That's all. I'm, I'm trying to give it a round figure. And a, a, an easily acceptable figure. And the thing is, man, nobody can deny that. Nobody can say, well, no, it's probably not 50%. You, if you, unless you're going to say, it's probably higher than that. Nobody's going to say, well, no, it's probably lower than that. It may be like 10%. Nope. That's why when you're in a situation, man, you got to make sure that somebody is with you for the right reason, man. That's why, you know, you, you have to take your time and pace yourself. And I'm not saying take your time, pace yourself before you cohabitate. I'm talking about take your time and pace yourself before you let the, before you let the relationship elevate to any level. You understand what I'm saying? Before you let it elevate to any level, before you let the relationship become intimate, you got to know who you're dealing with, man, because that woman could be, she could be one intimate experience away, man, from, you know, be becoming a fatal attraction. You don't never know. You got to take your time, man. You have to. Supreme C. Appreciate you joining the Alpha Family, man. Welcome to the Green Labor Gang. Dion B. Appreciate the five bones, man. It's a lot of dudes who need to hear. Men have to realize when and how they were sent. Then stop. Keep dropping gems. Yeah, that's what they have to do, man. You, you got to be realistic. You, you got to be real with yourself, man. You got to be real with yourself, man, because I'm going to be honest with you. Nine times out of ten, and this is, this is real talk, out of the situations I've seen, Nine times out of ten, two people have their own spot. The dude give up his spot to move in with the woman. So one of the homies just said in the chat, he was wondering if he ought to give up his spot to move in with her. No, man. Why? Well, what? Tell me the good reason you got to give up your spot. What's the good reason you got to give up your life? What are you getting? What are you getting? You mean tell me that you about to, you about to buy the cow and you already get the milk free? No. Man, let me tell you something. When women start giving the milk for free, they lost the right to have any type of demands on marriage or commitment in relationships. They lost the right. But men keep giving them the right. Men keep making them feel like, well, you still got the right. No, that's just a, it, it's a, it's an archaic outlook on relationship because there was a time when the only way to be intimate with that woman, she, you weren't getting no intimacy if you didn't marry her because her daddy would do something to both of y'all. That was many, many moons ago. None of us were alive then. As a matter of fact, your mom and daddy weren't alive then. It was a long time ago, homie. It's been three, four generations back. Now, it's not like that anymore. The one thing, the one bargaining chip that she has, she comes to the table willing to give it. She says, here's my bargaining chip. Hey, now let's bargain. And she ain't got no bargaining chip. And y'all still doing it? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's up to her. It's up to her to keep her bargaining chip. It's up to her to keep her bargaining chip. 
And that's my main issue with modern day relationship. We acting like it's okay for a woman to go out and do whatever she want to do and just go do it and then come back and she's still, she still wifey material. How? Define wifey material. She want to be, she want to be married? That's enough. That's all it takes today. All she got to do is want to be married. A guy run straight to the altar, cohabitate. Going to the chapel and we're going to get married. That's how y'all doing, man. Start our relationship talking about we had our ups and downs. How y'all had ups and downs, man? Y'all just met. You about to go be in a situation with a woman you know, already had ups and downs with, without cohabitation, without marriage? Come on, bro. It don't make sense, man. It doesn't make sense. So you hear men talking about doing it all the time, and they're all going to go that route. They're all, well, I'm going to marry her, man. I'm, well, man, we've been together all this time. I will marry. No, you might well not marry because y'all been together all this time. The woman that been with you 10 years, man, without marriage, you, what, what, she don't want to be married. She let 10 years go by. Listen, her family and her friends and her people putting pressure on her, it's causing her to put pressure on you to do something that neither of y'all two want to do. So y'all about to get pressured into being married because everybody else wants y'all to be married, but y'all don't want to be married because if y'all want to be married, y'all ass would have been married before it got to 10 years. All it takes is a decision to say, okay, we're going to get married. All it takes is for you to give her a ring. All it takes for you to drop down on one knee like a beta male Sam man Johnny and say, will you be my queen? She's your queen to be. That, you, you know that. So after 10 years, you're going to succumb to the pressure that somebody else giving her to pressure you to do something. She's going to force you to do something she don't even want to do. Okay, now it's the time for you to be a man. How you going to get bullied in there getting married, man? Don't make no sense. Now, if you met the woman and you just love her dirty draw, I do love you. I love you. I love you. If you met her, man, I ain't talking about you. If that what you got, Keep that. Because if I had that, I'd keep it. I'd be honest with you, man. If I met the one that made me say that, I'm going to keep her. And would I be sure? I'm going to be right there. But let me tell you something. I'm a grown, grown man. And it ain't happened yet. But if it happened to you, man, go ahead and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? It, go ahead and do your thing, man. Jarvis Austin, appreciate the five bones, man. Appreciate it. Again, Jarvis Austin, again, appreciate the five bones. Do your book session. Yeah, man. D Fleming's about to put it all. Uh, D Fleming's going to put it in chat for you, man. Appreciate the five bones, man. African Cartel. Appreciate the five bones. A lot of time we men keep a cleaner spot anyway. Keep spinning this troop, BOA. Yeah, man. We do. We do. Real talk. You know, and, and you know, and the thing is, man. I think the problem is we live in a society where so many men have gotten pushed into that corner and they're so afraid to buck that system that they won't even, now they'll put, if you if you talk to them away from their woman, man, let me tell you, I don't know if I told y'all that, man, but I was fishing one day. You know, that's what I do, man. That's one of the most relaxing things in the world. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm going in the morning, earth thing in the morning. So when you think about it, man, you have to ask yourself, why do these guys be in these situations that they absolutely hate? But you got to talk to him. You got to talk to one of them away from their woman for him to tell you. So I'm out there, man, this older dude, man, his, uh, I think his daughter, his daughter played, uh, I think softball at, uh, I think at, uh, at either Alcorn or, uh, or Southern Miss, one of them. And so we would, we out there talking, man, we were killing them though, man. We were wearing them fish out, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we both, just, we were just walking up and down the bank, man, dropping them, wearing them out. And so, uh, we end up at the same spot, man. We end up talking because they slow down, man. And so we just, once they slow down, you just chill and, you know, try to get them to buy that one spot. But he was talking, man. And he was, man, just started talking about, man, his, his wife, man, and how they had been married before. They were married for 10 years. Then they broke up for eight years. Then they got married again. And he was just as unhappy this second time as he was the first time when they split up. And I told him, just like I'm going to tell y'all now, never let a woman come back to you. Ever. Never let a woman come back to you. Why? 
because she still doesn't want you. You are just the best option she has. Now, if you locked up like C murder, yeah, you probably need to go ahead and do it, Carl. And probably ain't nobody else gonna come down there and kick with him like that. Take pictures with him, all hugged up with him, talking about she gonna stand there with him, she gonna be there for him when he get out. But if you're a free man out here in the world, man, you don't never let a woman circle back to you, man. Cause when she circled back, she ain't circling back because she see the error of her ways and and and, and she just missed what y'all had. No, she missed what you did. She missed what she had. Cause you ain't had yourself nothing. And that's real. Lord Juno. Lord Juno, appreciate the two bone. What if she tells you she wants to move in your spot? She can't tell you nothing. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully she's asking you, can she move in? But no, I man, I say this. If you're going to cohabitate, if you're going to cohabitate, you better let the woman move in your crib. Here's the problem with that. In some states, a lot of states, once you let them move in, y'all living in that sham bill like husband and wife. You can't hardly get out no more. You understand? You can't hardly get her out. So before you cohabitate, man, you better make sure that's the woman, man, that you can see yourself with forever. And I say, to me, that's the question you ask yourself before you cohabitate. Can I see myself with this woman forever? It, it, do I see forever with her? Like when I think about her, when I look at my life and I be like, man, I can't see my life without her. If you can't see your life without her, then okay, consider it. But me, I still say no. Why can't she just keep her own damn spot? Like, why can't she just keep her own spot? Why y'all got to move in together? If y'all have a wonderful relationship, why y'all got to broke y'all? Why y'all got to break something that ain't fixed? Why y'all got to fix something that ain't broken? Rather, why y'all got to fix something that ain't broken? How come y'all just can't leave it how it is? Why all of a sudden we got to live together? Everything great with us. I like my crib. You like your crib. Hell, you like my crib. I like yours. We both got two different spots to hang out at. When I'm at your crib, baby, it's like a vacation. When you're at my crib, it's like a vacation for you. You know what I'm saying? I love for you to fly in. You know what I'm saying? Hell, I love to fly in. I love it. It's an amazing thing. So why are we going to put ourselves in a situation where we can't do that no more? We can't do that no more. We got to wake up every day, man, and see each other. Man, we don't have the excitement of flying in and out of town to see each other. We can't even fly and meet somewhere. What do we want to go to Seattle? We got to leave from the same house and fly on the plane together. Can you do you know the excitement of me being on a plane and you being on a plane coming from two different places and we're going to meet somewhere, shawty? Don't deprive yourself, homies, of the excitement that comes with dealing with women from the proper perspective. You understand what I'm saying? Don't deprive yourself of dealing with women from the proper perspective, from a position of power, man. Because cohabitation, it compromises the power. I don't care who you are. I don't care how cold you are. Cohabitation compromises the power. In the square world now. You know what I'm saying? The underworld, on the turf, it ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? On the turf, the women, they, 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 they listen, they despise calling the law just as much as you do in that, in that life. But we talking about in the square world over here where we live. And you know, that's my thing, man. I'm bring, I am I believe in bringing the principles of the ism to the square world, as many of them as you can apply. You can't apply all of them to the square world. Some of them belong in that world. We're going to leave them there. But the ones that we can apply to this world, we're going to apply them. And the number one thing is, man, don't make a move that doesn't benefit the overall relationship. Now, if you're struggling, shooting bad, And cohabitation will upgrade your life. I'm not going to tell no man don't upgrade your life in any way you can. I'm not going to tell no man that. You understand? But I'm talking about a man who out here getting you out here doing your thing out here living. You good. You got your own spot, man. You got your own whips. You, you good, man. You taking paying your bills on time, man. Your credit score top notch. I'm talking about that. Why would you do that? What is the purpose? Somebody put the purpose of cohabitation for me in the chat. Somebody put, you know what? I'm going to do a poll on the channel. I'm going to do a poll on the channel. I'm going to do a poll on the channel. Matter of fact, why, why y'all putting that in the chat, man? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this poll right now on the channel. I'm about to do a poll on the channel right now. I'm about to do it right now.
who benefits most from cohabitation? So the poll is who benefits most from cohabitation? Both the man and woman are already successful. All right. It's the poll question, man. Who benefits most? Who benefits more? Only two people involved. Who benefits more from cohabitation if both the man and woman are already successful? All right. The options are the man, the woman. Both is a 50 50 relationship. I think this is going to be a good poll right here. Now, bear with me here, man. I'll type I pick. All right, so we got both is a 50 50 relationship and neither. Cohabitation is dumb. I know what some of y'all are going to put. <laughs> I know what some of the homies going to put, man, but I, I, I want to see. I want to see what happens. All right, man, so that's the poll. Who benefits more from cohabitation if both the man and woman are already successful? The man, the woman, both is a 50 50 relationship. Neither cohabitation is dumb. All right, that go to poll, man. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we come up with, man. I think that's a decent poll, man. Like, I really want to know the answer to that, man, because, you know, people always they act like, man, cohabitation is such a wonderful thing, man, and that everybody should be doing it. And, man, I ain't, man, nobody got time for that foolishness, man. Anybody got time for that, man? Barnyard, appreciate the fifty dollars sponsorship. Of the, appreciate the fifty dollars sponsorship of the show. Fire, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you tuning in, man. Appreciate the support. Juno again, man. Appreciate the five bone super sticker. So you know, here's the thing, man. And we'll talk. We'll say this, man, before we wrap this thing up. We've been in it boy about an hour and a half, man. We'll say this before we wrap it up. The main thing that kills your libido in a cohabitation situation like marriage or, you know, just any type of, any type of relationship that leads to that type of commitment. The frequency of sex will increase due to the, approxim the proximity effect. Like you're right there. So just being in such close proximity means the frequency of intimacy will increase. But as it increases, the novelty of it wears off. You know the man. I can't wait to get the shot of career. Man, I'm gonna knock the knobs off her, boy. I can't wait to get the shot of career. I'm be breaks off her. It goes away because it becomes a thing where y'all go from being intimate all weekend long to, especially in the beginning, y'all jump off, man. It be you know three, four, five, six times a week. And, and for me, that's just going that's going wear the novelty of it off real quick, man. Is it gonna get old? You know what I'm saying? Is it gonna get old? And when it becomes more routine. Like anything that's routine, it becomes second nature. You don't think about it anymore. Like you don't value it. Like if you're drinking a gallon of water every day, after a while, man, you don't value the water. I mean, you you understand what it's doing, but it's compartmentalized in a secret compartment in the back of your brain. So it's not wasting no memory space where you don't even think about it anymore. But, you know, when you're first starting to drink all that water and you're still counting the bottles or, or you measuring it out in, in the jug, you're like, man, there's a lot of water. I can't drink it. But when early in the early when you first start drinking and they run you to the bathroom all day, you're thinking about it. Once it becomes routine, you don't think about it no more. You understand what I'm saying? Once you start seeing results in the gym, you don't think about the how hard it is no more. You think about the results. You're like, okay, I'm finna get better results. I'm finna get better results. That's just how it is. And that's the same way with intimacy in a cohabitation situation, man. You go into that situation and you realize that everything that you valued just suddenly has less value. And that's a tough situation to be in, man. 
And like I said, man, the main thing is you lose that masculine space to rebuild and replenish your alpha energy. That's the main thing. That's the main thing, man. All of these other things, yes, they are relevant. But the main thing, if none of these things were there, that one thing is enough for me to say. If I ain't got to do it, I sure ain't going to choose to do it, man. So I say this to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. Been super real in the field, man. I ain't going to hold y'all in here too much longer, man. Man, the low, appreciate the dollar, man. I ain't going to hold y'all in here too much longer, man. We're going to get ready to slide on out of here. Again, salute to the homie Barnyard, man. I appreciate the $50 sponsorship of the show. Let's get ready to slide on out of here, man. I appreciate the support. I'm going to leave it one up for a minute, man. Y'all know I'm going to do it. Just so uh, just so we can get to the bottom of it, man, and people can come through and get a good listen on it. In the meantime, man, y'all put God first, keep grinding and growing. Now, that's the end of the show. And I don't know where else y'all finna go. But when you get there, you just left the alpha sphere. And over here, alpha's up, beta's down. Is indeed, I'm talking about absolutely indeed, the motto. Peace. <laughs> Seems like no matter what you do sometimes, your efforts go underappreciated or unappreciated, period. You know, all we do, man, is try to give men the information they need to become the best version of themselves. No hate. We love women. We don't hate them. We just don't take no foolishness. And we can't be controlled by our lust. Those men can, but not us. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. Alpha's up, betas down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. Alpha's up, betas down, it's the motto. Drinks acting like they max, but they not though. Alpha's up, betas down, it's the motto. Betas claiming to be alpha, but they not though. I'm not gonna tell you, man, that you shouldn't value your woman at all. A woman does have value, but you can't overvalue her. And convince yourself that she brings more value to your life than you bring to hers. You know, just the protection and provision is more than a woman can ever make up for, man. So I'm not saying don't give her her props for what she does, but damn sure never make her feel like she's more important to you than you are to her because it's just a figment of your imagination. She knows the truth, so you have to understand the truth as well. This is called the abundance mindset. There's nothing she can give you that you can't give yourself besides a baby. And do you really want one of those right now? Nope. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Tricks acting like they max, but they not though. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Betas claiming to be alpha, but they not though. See the main thing that. Men let women slide with is shut up in this and obedience. Now, when you use the term obedience with a woman, she automatically relates that to being a slave. But slaves aren't obedient. Obedience is a choice. Slaves either do it or die. Shut up in this is another thing that women have a problem with. It doesn't mean you can't talk. It means that you can't talk when I'm talking. It means that when we're talking about things that I do as the man, you don't have an opinion on those things. Because I make decisions based on facts, not opinions, not even my own opinions, and most certainly not yours. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. Alpha sub betas down, it's the motto. 